Good morning, everyone. This is Rachel with Whimsy Ray's Artistry. And I am here at Longleaf Park. And I'm getting ready to show you 10 different ways to use coffee grounds to make mixed media art, which is my favorite thing to do. Yes, I got some good news for you. I got some support from the local Arts Council here in Wilmington, North Carolina. I don't know if you can hear this or if this is working or not. Helping me speak better or to where you can hear better. I'm not sure if it's working. <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, again, this is Rachel with Whimsy Ray's Artistry here live at Longleaf Park. And I just want to get started, but I got a couple things I got to tell you. I'm so excited. So anyway, I just wanted to show you a picture of the pond. Um, and then we'll get started. This is just a cute little view of where I'm at at the Longleaf Park. I'm going to see if I can get it a little bit closer for you. Um, every week at 1030, I will be doing a live video. And um, next week, I will not be though, because I'm going to be taking um, and doing an, a video in advance. Uh, but basically what I'm going to do today is uh, talk to you about 10 different ways that we use coffee grounds. Next week, I'm gonna be doing something else, which is gonna be kind of a reflection. It's gonna do basically all the videos I've done just so far up to this point, um, basically kind of going over some blending techniques and things like that. Uh, but, but overall, I kind of want to do what you call like a stop and smother roses video next week where it's going to be pre or done ahead of time. So you'll see what I mean, how I combine different things with mi mixed media, different ideas to come up with, depth, um, composition, things like that to help make my art the way I would like it to be. And I still have a signature. A lot of people have yet to see because they don't know about me yet, but they will. So just stay tuned, hang in there, because I'm coming at you. This is Whimsy Rays with uh, my daughter and my dog today at <laughs> Longleaf Park. Okay, so I'm going to tilt the camera down so you can see. Oh, I almost forgot. That's right, Wilmington Arts Council. So here's the deal with that. I have a contract with Wilmington Arts Council to do 20... 16 by 20 art pieces of famous pe famous people. So I have until June 30th to do these. Um, and I'm going to be doing them mixed media style. Um, and so I will be doing um, 20 people that I kind of like or admire, think that would be photogenic or good to be in a painting or a drawing. And I might have a little bit of both in there pieces but as I do them I might drop a little bit of information to you um, so that you can see where I'm headed with it and where I'm going. I'm also doing commission work on the side and I still work full time so I'm a busy lady but in essence my point is is that I'm going to transition into the art business full time almost there not quite just just close enough but I have a Redbubble, uh, which is a Redbubble account, and it has Whimsy Race artistry. So if you would like to get your Whimsy Race t-shirt, here it is. And it's on Redbubble. And I also have um, spiral notebooks that you could purchase or um, backpacks and other things like that. And I have some of my artwork on there. I'm adding a little at a time as I get time to do so. I'm going to keep adding more work. I have a lot of ideas, designs, different things like that for you to choose from. So if you're looking for some gift ideas, a gift card, greeting card, um, you can look there and you might find something you like. There's a lot of um, people that are trying to support minority businesses right now. And if you're here in Wilmington or anywhere and you'd like to support Whimsy Ray's Artistry, and check out Redbubble. I also have a YouTube channel, which I take my live videos and I download them, edit them, still learning that, but I'm learning. Uh, download them onto YouTube. 
and they're on my YouTube channel and of course it's Whimsy Ray's artistry there so um, I will start now <laughs> doing some uh, what you've been waiting for some art And that's my dog, Saber, saying he's bored out of his mind. I'm going to get this camera a little bit closer to everything here. And these are some of the things I can edit out on my YouTube channel. Let's see here. And believe it or not, when I'm watching myself do this, it actually takes a lot longer than I expect it to. <laughs> believe it or not. All right, so this is uh, Recollections white cardstock paper that I'm using, and I taped onto a board over here. This is Professional Matte Gel Matte Medium. I got this at Michael's, and um, this is Distress Permanent Ink. I have Gemstone. Got that from the Dollar Store, Dollar General. This is little pieces of that. I have my little cups over here to blend. This is metallic gold paint from Craft Smart. Heavy gesso, which we're gonna put some in here and get it ready. This is black. I wanted white, but I accidentally grabbed the black. So I got some slow drying heavy body zinc white acrylic here you go that's from golden I'm gonna put that on the opposite side we'll use that as our gesso instead it'll work just fine I have different things I can use to blend with different brushes here's my Liquitex matte medium and last but not least my favorite is my art extravagance patina effect paste this is blue, and look how beautiful and rich this is. It's beautiful blue color. Isn't that pretty? Right in your face with it. <laughs> and this one is Red Rust Art Extravagance. That one's a beautiful, rich color, too. And these they usually add on textures with scrapbook um, designs. This is the glue gun I use. And I'm showing you this because I love this. And if you ever want to learn about what kind of craft glue gun to use, this is awesome. So you can see. Small for children and or adults. Or ladies with small hands. <laughs> these are my coffee grounds, which I almost forgot, but I didn't. Ha <laughs> ha. And these are going to be the sample boards that we're going to use to uh, put all right so let's get started let's do acrylic paint coffee grounds and we're going to use white and green so I'm going to take my little cup put my coffee grounds in there and what I'm trying to do is see if the coffee grounds will change the color of the white. So I'm just going to grab a little spatula here. It's heavy body white acrylic paint. I'm just going to blend that in right on the side of the cup. And the reason why I chose Heavy Body is because it's not as watery, and I like texture. So if I just want to take this spatula and carve it right onto the paper, I can. So then, this is white, Heavy Body acrylic. And I'm just doing things to kind of help give myself ideas to add texture to my mixed media art. So here we go. I'm just going to spread this on and see how this looks. This is not supposed to be a perfect. This is just like a test or different things you can do. 
This is just designed to show you what it looks like, what it's like to work with coffee grounds, and what happens to it when you put it on a paper. This is that cardstock paper I was telling you about. And I'll put it closer to you so you can see. Maybe I will do this, move these over, so that way I can just rest the paper right underneath. Okay, let's see if I can enlarge this a little bit. But first I'm gonna do that. So what happens with the paint is it turns into like a glue almost, a glue-like substance. But it, the coffee grounds is, is um, of course, not used. They're just dry coffee grounds, Folgers coffee grounds. And, you know, there's different colors of coffee grounds you could use and add more rich texture and things like that. But just for the sake of trying it. Now, the neat thing about that is, is I've got on here to add green. And I'm going to try to add, let's see, I have a green. I do have a green paint. I'm just going to take with my spatula. What I'm going to do is I'll show you. I just took that and just put that right on the spatula now this is not a heavy body this is just d dollar and roundy acrylic I think that's how you pronounce it dollar and roundy acrylic and I reason why I just wanted to try green in there just to see what it would look like Now, because I don't want those scratch marks on there, I might try something different. So I'm going to try, this is what people use when they're applying a face painting, makeup, things like that. It has a spongy material. I just smooth that on there. And then I can kind of add a little bit of circular motion there create like a pattern okay so that's with white just acrylic paint and that's coffee grounds in white and green so it really didn't um, moral of the story is it really didn't change the color too terribly much of the let me get it a little bit closer here so you can see. But yeah, it really didn't change the color too much to a brown per se. It looks kind of a gray, almost opaque color. And it's gonna dry like that. Um, some of the coffee grounds will come up, but not all of it will. Um, when it dries, it just hardens right along with the paint. And then you can add um, some really cool effects to that on top of it. And for example, what I mean by that is, is you can add on top of that, layer it with more texture using the coffee crowns and continue to build on that. And that will create a really beautiful background or um, beautiful piece for a um, scrapbook or just for an abstract picture. Now this one we're going to do glazing medium only or a matte medium but I will go ahead and use glazing medium since that's what I have on the paper and coffee grounds and I'm just going to use the same little cup I have. So this is my Liquitex professional glazing medium. I'm going to take that and stir it up. And I just want to see what that's going to look like. And later what I'll do is take a photo of these things once they dry. Again, glazing medium is kind of a 
clear looking. It looks almost as similar to um, your glue gun, like the plastic from a glue gun. Because it, it dries somewhat clear. So we're just going to leave that. And as you can see, some of the coffee color in there is trying to come through. And again, you don't have to use what I'm using per se. You can use something else to apply it to create texture. But because it's coffee grounds, you want to have something that you can use to kind of carve it on there and just kind of lay it down like you would um, icing on a cake. Okay, and then the next one we're going to try is coffee grounds with patina paste. So we're going to move this over. And up. And I'm going to get a paper towel and see if this works. And this time I'm going to use in a different cup. Get some coffee grounds out. I'm going to get my paste out first. I'm just going to scoop a decent amount in the cup here. So there's my patina paste, so you can kind of see the consistency of that. And again, this is one of my favorite tools to use when I'm making texture because it, it just it's a gorgeous color and that color is very hard to find patina color um, if you think of uh, I think of the ocean and I think of um, pieces that are rusted that's the kind of effect it has and it's uh, just a beautiful bright amazing paint to work with this is your red rust this is more of a gritty you can see grittier paste looks more sandy fine sand like a silica sand almost I wouldn't be surprised if that's what's in it okay and let me get my paper towel here and clean off a couple things Okay. And some water here. I'm gonna clean out my spatula. Okay, so the goal is to try to get the coffee grounds blended with the patina paste. And the reason why again is texture, texture, texture. It's already got texture in it. But the texture's different granules. Uh, the granules are different. They're real fine. And let's say I want something in the background to look like it's been sitting underwater for long periods of time. And it's got like coral built up on it or, or that kind of effect. Then I can take coffee grounds and blend it. Then I have a combination of your fine along with your very thick, beautiful, look at that. It's almost like a terracotta effect. It's real pretty. we we'll take that on there. And then we're gonna blend after we clean off our little spatula here. And we're going to blend some more. I'm going to blend this patina paste on here now. And look at that. Look how beautiful that is. That is so pretty. And you see that? 
Now, if you add some gold to that, let's do it. Let's add a little bit of gold. I like these two colors together. They just look like they belong together. I'm just going to blend that a little bit so you can see how beautiful and how nicely they blend. And yes, there's coffee grounds in there. So that's another thing you can use coffee grounds for. The neat thing about this is with coffee grounds, you can get a coffee grounder and blend more your coffee grounds and make them really fine, almost like a powder. And then you can actually use the powder with your white to make a really distinctive color, a distinctive brown. If you don't have brown, you could make it and it creates like a raw umber color or a, more of a burnt umber. Now this is a acrylic gold and I let this dry out a little bit, well quite a bit, and see how thick it is? This is very thick. So when I put it on there, it's gonna pull probably some of this paste. So I'm gonna put it on the corner here. But this is acrylic gold. But see there? I don't want to blend it too much because I'm taking the rest away. But I even like how it looks right there on the spatula there. That is beautiful. Make a really nice rustic effect. You could add a little bit of gray to that even like a white to kind of lighten it. You'd have to be really careful with the coffee grounds so because that will affect the color. But you could add some white right onto that. For example, take some white here and see how it kind of changes to a grayish color. And that turns it into like a vintage color gray. Vintage gray right there. That's why I like these pastes because they really blend well with acrylic. And there's your vintage gray. Beautiful, beautiful. So if you like vintage style art, that's another idea you can use to make some really beautiful background for your art right there. I could save that piece and attach it to something else. Okay, now let's go to coffee grounds wet under distress ink so what i mean by that is i'm going to take some distress ink which is this here that's a broken china blue it's just going to spray it on there if it'll spray if not i might have to just dab it on so what I'll do is I'll take this. Yeah, I'll just pour some on. Distress ink is very tricky. See that? Now this is cardstock paper, so it's not watercolor paper, and distress ink is very watery. So keep that in mind. It's going to make that paper bow. It's a beautiful ink to work with, but as you can see, it it it's it's like messing with a a pigmented watercolor almost. So I'm just taking some coffee grounds and sprinkling that right on there. And see how that does? It starts to absorb some of that ink. Now I've done this before in my art where I've just taken it and letting it sit for a few minutes and then at just as it starts to dry I'll spray it with water and then I'll come back and d dab it a little bit. So I kind of go back and forth, and then I'll add some liquid text or, no, I'll add water, and then I'll add some more Distress Ink to that to darken around there, and I'll add more coffee grounds, and then I'll daub it again, and I'll take all of that once it dries and pull it off just to see what it looks like underneath, or I will take a spray of the, um, uh, what is that called? Uh, like a finishing spray that you spray over the top of all your artwork. Saber. I'll spray that over the top and it acts like a glue and it will keep some of that that um, 
it'll keep some of that right there on the top of the picture now this is coffee grounds over permanent ink or white acrylic paint so this is one where you take and this is where i was going to come with this idea these are stencil blanks you can get these at craft stores in other words you can make your own stamp or um, you can buy them of course but if you have an idea that's very unique and you have a really cool stamp that you want to use you can do that but this is one that i used to use all the time when i did uh, face painting and i'm just going to clean this off and i just love it it's beautiful pretty little bird so what i'm going to do is take I'm just testing this to see if this will work because I'm not sure. I want to take permanent ink and see if it'll do anything at all. Now this is my Distress Permanent Mixed Media Ink. Okay, these are actually the colors in there. I'm going to try for the gray and see if it's not dried out on me. It might be. If, if so, I have some alcohol ink I can put on there. Let's see. Yeah, it's just enough. Let's add a little bit more right here. Add to this here. There we go. Now we're working on getting that gray in there. Now let's do different color. Let's do some brown right there. And let's try this one by the feet. Just want to make sure the wings are definitely in the picture. Now, this gives me an idea to take some coffee grounds. and add now I like that just by itself actually so I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to add another and that's beautiful okay so let's go right here I'll show it to you when I'm done what I'm doing but I'm gonna take my let's try some gold let's get back to some of this gold metallic paint right here I'm gonna shake it up a little bit this is a different color gold than the one I was using earlier and that's the different, the unique thing about different uh, brands of paint. Nothing's the same. Purple's different, different brands, believe it or not. It's just like with shoes. Shoes kind of fit differently depending on the brand of the shoes sometimes that you get. All right, so this has got coffee grounds mixed with gold. And ink is on the bottom just below on one side. So I'm gonna take some of that and just kind of scoop some of that excess up just a little bit. Not too much. Okay. Another thing I like about mixed media is it's messy. I like artwork where I can kind of get in and just get into the texture of it. So that is with gold coffee grounds and that's with the ink. So 
that's why I like mixed media. Again, it stands out. Um, it just makes for a really beautiful effect on your art when you're trying to do something new and unique. And um, this one is supposed to be coffee grounds painted on with white acrylic and a stamp. So we just did a um, kind of like a stamp effect, but this is going to be a little bit different type of stamp. This is like a larger stamp that I've used in the past, as you can see. It's very big, but I wanted to test it out and see what coffee grounds will do with white acrylic. So let's take this, clean this off. I'm going to grab some white acrylic. White acrylic. And coffee grounds. So there's the white acrylic. I'm going to take coffee grounds. And again, we already know what it's kind of going to look like. Okay, so I'm going to blend that just enough. So, what I'm thinking about doing is applying it directly onto the stamp. So what I mean by that is, is taking basically something like a flat surface, applying it just on the areas that I want the stamp to appear, just to see if it will work. This is kind of like a spongy kind of stamp. And you know, I'm gonna even spray a little bit of a uh, Distress Purple on there, just because I wanna see what it will do. See if I can get it to work. Can't get it to work. This is a Purple Distress Spray. And let's see. Just trying different things here. See if I can get this to go on the stamp just a little bit. Trying to be a little bit cautious here because it's very watery, like I mentioned. So I'm just going to press down. There we go. So you can stamp with coffee grounds, but see how it smudges a little bit? But you know what? I still like it. I still like the effect it made. What I can do, again, is I can sprinkle some more coffee grounds on there if I wanted to because there's paint on there. It'll act like a glue, and it'll some of it will stick, some of it won't, which is fine because when you want to add a little bit of variety to your art let's say like if you want to do like this here just sprinkle a little bit on there and some of it will come off some of it won't just to add again texture and variety something different a change there you go so I'm going to take this and pat it So I had grabbed some of the coffee grounds on this to put over here, so that showed my smudge there. So it didn't pull too much because it's starting to dry. So I'm going to spray a little water on it just to see if it's going to grab at it any. And what it's doing with the water is it's leaving tiny little rings of brown around those coffee grains. So it's adding like almost like a dimensional effect to that. You can see. 
So let's start from the beginning. Here's one. That's acrylic paint, just with coffee grounds and some green. Two is glazing medium and coffee grounds only. Three is patina paste, red rust paste in a little white. Four is distress ink and water. The fifth one is with a, a little stamp of a flower. The first one is ink, permanent. And the second one is with gold and coffee grounds. And this one is a stamp, an actual stamp, a spongy one with white acrylic paint and a little bit of purple. And then I sorry, I sprinkled some coffee grounds on the top of that. Okay, so next, what I did yesterday, what I added was a metallic gold. This is Aztec gold painted with coffee grounds and glazing medium. And I added my patina paste and I painted it and blended it and it looks beautiful. I like the effect. It looks like something you find again, like in an ancient, I don't know, deep sea dive or something that they discovered underwater. It's really pretty. And this one is just a, a mixture. This was a, uh, one that didn't stay on there, but this one I decided to add some beads to it. And this is with a glue gun. This is also with that Aztec gold, a glue gun and coffee grounds to add texture with, but with a green background over it. And this is not anything in particular, it's just an abstract idea. Um, the color of the um, glue is this, or the uh, glue gun color is actually this color. It's supposed to be like a, almost like a opaque color by itself. And then I just sprayed on a uh, distress ink with green in the background. All right, the ninth one is foil strips, which I didn't bring, but I still have that metallic gold paint that we did. We already used that already with the coffee grounds. We blended it, but I'm just gonna give you an idea of some things you can do. So with medium, it's like glue, right? So because this is cardstock paper, I'm just gonna show you what I can do real quick. Another idea, just spray this across because this is like really nice glue, okay? And of course, some of your paints are too. So you take your gold, just kind of go across like this, almost like a mixed pour here. Now I can take my coffee grounds. Yep, put it in between or over the top. You can try to put them in between. You can do a controlled, uh, more controlled, um, uh, spraying of the coffee grounds or application I could say sometimes when you're doing these videos it's hard to find the words that you want to say and any other time they just come out just fine except when you're trying to do a video sometimes it's a lot of people going through quite a bit nowadays a lot of depression a lot of grief people are kind of angry about various things happening but art is a way to express yourself without causing harm <laughs> to any one person or anything. And it's a great way to relieve stress. So if you're looking for ideas, options, if you're sheltering in place and you need something to do, art is a great way to do, do that, express yourself. So here is another thing I was gonna do a lot of coffee grounds I know I'm gonna add a little bit of white to that and then I saw somebody do this on TV on the internet I don't know how well this will work but we'll see because this white is thicker than the actual the other paint the gold see how thick that is so it's not really a blending. Usually they pour watery substances, watery paint when they're doing pours, and this is not watery. 
So I'm just trying to keep this controlled since I added so much paint. So I'm gonna go this way with it. I'm gonna fan it out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna lift. I'm gonna come back this way with the white. Remember, we've got that gel medium on the bottom. So the coffee grounds, some of them will stick. Okay. I'm just pressing down to get some of the coffee grounds to stick there. And I'm gonna come back with some of that gold and white. Now, let's see, what can I do? I kinda like all of that going on there, but I'm gonna just kinda press down. Like might add a little bit more right there. Maybe put some gold there. So, word to the wise, if you're using coffee grounds, you're gonna have to use some semi-thick or semi-dry or kind of like a heavier paint, depending on the effect that you wanna get out of it. So that is what you need to keep in mind with that. Kind of clean this up a little bit. So that's kind of my idea of a little bit of a mixed pour. And so that way, if you don't want to have a watery pour, if you want to have like a textured pour per se, you can go in with something like this. You could try sand, silica sand. Again, you can even turn your coffee grounds into a powder and add it, maybe make a powder out of it to make it apply or stay more, almost like a paste. Make your own paste with it. So many different things you can do with it. You can blend that white out a little bit more. And in. So things like this I enjoy doing where it's, it's, it's not me doing the work, it's the paint showing you what it does when you apply it. So I can add some more gel medium there in the center and then take some more coffee grounds and add some more coffee grounds there. And no, I wasn't intending on adding that much, but it just kind of happened. Now the gel medium will dry um, pretty much clear. And that will kind of settle in there a little bit. I'm just gonna press down on it just a little bit. This is just all kind of like a thumbnail, just a thing you can do. It's not meant to go on a permanent anything right now. This is just all kind of a discovery a little bit here, I guess you could say, or experimentation. I can come back with a little bit more coffee grounds. And add that to the center there. And then let that dry. That just adds a really deep, beautiful texture to your painting there. That's why I like coffee grounds so much and using it. 
can put that on the edge of your painting. There you go. Glazing medium, purple distress ink, coffee grounds on top of white acrylic. Okay, so we're going to try that. Uh, white acrylic. This is our 10th idea. I think I've given you more than 10 ideas, though. But that's okay. That's what this is for. Okay, so we got that. And then we're going to put purple distress ink. I just want to see what that does on top of heavy body acrylic. I've always been curious. And then I'm just going to add some coffee grounds right around here. Again, some of your paint acts like a glue. Then what you can do is take Make a little popsicle stick and add some stressed lines to it. Since it's called distress, we'll make it look stressed out. Add a little purple there. Added a little too much purple, maybe. Again, we'll see what it looks like when it dries. I can go back and add a little white to it. I have some white left over here, so we'll do that. This is heavy body white. I like using that, of course, as you can see. This is why. And when it dries, it dries like that. Really beautiful. I'm going to put coffee grounds right along here. Now I could add some black to that on that side, blend in there. Since I have some gesso, some black gesso, which is also like a glue. And I'm gonna strip my white down. I like the streaks actually. I like the clumps, I like the streaks it's creating. That texture. But see, that's me, I like texture. A lot of people may not like it, but when you see it on a art piece, it may make a difference. To some people, it may not. I don't know. But either way, it's what I like to do. It's what I specialize in. That's my signature is texture. So there you have it. We have 10 different ways to use coffee grounds. So we just finished with the last four. We'll put it up close. Metallic gold. Painted with coffee grounds. The other one. This one is metallic gold. This one is Aztec gold, excuse me. Metallic gold and white, coffee grounds. This one's with a glue gun and some gems. Aztec gold. I really like that. And this one here is with heavy body white. I put matte medium on the bottom to glue everything down. So there's matte medium on the bottom, and then I put white paint, and then I put some Distress 
purple ink on this side with the white and just carved that and then I used black gesso on this side with coffee grounds. There you have it. You can see that beautiful accent of the texture and the colors. I love that. One more time. Coffee grounds white and green acrylic paint. Glazing medium only. It's starting to dry. It's almost dry. Not quite. Almost dry. Coffee grounds and that looks like it's almost dry as well. And let's see, I don't want to touch that because that's just going to pull on the paper. Now, if I had watercolor paper, it would probably have a different effect. And if I had possibly some alcohol, and I mean rubbing alcohol, not the kind you drink. Anyway, this is uh, with an ink, permanent ink, ideas that you can use to make art with. Again, I just used my coffee grounds and I used my gold and then this one is a stamp it's not a perfect look but i had an idea to take the ink over it and i like that idea and i might just blend the ink with it because that ink with the white really turned out to be a really rich and vibrant purple it's almost like a metallic purple it's beautiful beautiful so here you go Thank you very much for tuning in. This is Rachel's with Rachel with Whimsy Ray's Artistry. <laughs> that is a tongue twister, I tell you. Thanks for watching. I'm at Longleaf Park, and I will see you next week. Bye.